All right, so back here in the shop again for another little tutorial. This time we're going to be talking about Big Bore Cummins engines made in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, this is going to uh, this is going to be kind of similar for all of your M11s, L10s, uh, N14s, NT855, NH855, um, a whole whole host of them. Anything that has mechanical PT injection or top stop injectors or the STC injectors. They said the heads came in from a shop. Um, guy I used to work with, guy that uh, you know knows enough about what he's doing to at least have a good idea of what's going on here. Um, but so the complaint with this engine was that it ran rough. It ran rough. It smoked extremely bad. And it slobbered. It, and by slobbering, I mean it idled okay, but revving it up, it was not clean. It also, when it ran wide open, it it was smoky. But once it got up to to low or up to RPM, it ran out smooth. So after they had done a whole bunch of diagnosing on this thing, they had ruled it down to the fact that it had to have uh, an issue with the head. It had to have an issue with the head, and, and, and that was what they thought. And I, I, I tried to tell him, even though the heads were already off, that, that there was probably something wrong with the heads, but the heads weren't the problem. The theory that they had as to why these heads, and this is a, uh, all three of the heads off of a, uh, an NT855 out of a, like, all oh, this would be a Ford Versatile, um, but uh, their, their theory was is that there was oil coming out the exhaust and that there was a little bit of oil in some of the intake tracks, especially after it had been shut down or on initial startup. Okay, the, the deal with these engines, and this is something that a lot of guys uh nowadays don't deal with on a regular basis and and so it gets very confusing and it, it took me a long time to even get it straight um there are things wrong with these heads the, these heads do have issues okay but it is physically impossible short of having oil control rings that are shot to be pumping oil out the exhaust now what this engine did have is it's got a classic case of being dusted and by dusted this this engine has eaten a lot of uh it has eaten a lot of uh dirt it the poor air filter maintenance and things when we first tore this engine or these heads down and put them in the spray wash cabinet the floor of the intake here had this layer of a greasy grime that was in there I wish I'd taken a picture of it beforehand, but it just had this thin cake in there that almost had to be chiseled off. And right now it's all covered in WD-40 just to keep it from rusting. When we tore the head down, there's there's soot and this, this layer of this gunk and grime in here. Well, when you actually get to looking at that, this isn't carbon buildup. Um, it, is, it is a combination of dirt from a previous turbo failure and um, or oil from a previous turbo failure and dirt. The other thing, if we look really close, if it'll pick it up, you can see the sheer amount of wear. If I can get it to focus on them intake valves. And this is one of the, the worst ones here. I ground one valve and I took off 35 thousandths and still didn't clean the groove out of the center of it. Now, this alone, this seems dramatic. This valve sealed perfectly. This valve held, held vacuum, held fluid, and, and had no issues as far as sealing goes. And what I tried to tell everybody is, even though you saw oil coming down the valve stem, even though you saw oil on the end, or what looked to be oil in the exhaust tract, even though these guides have about 10 or 15 thousandths too much play in them, these heads would run for another 10,000 hours, probably without seeing any significant failures. 
the, the issue with these heads is not the head, it's not the injector cup that the customer thought. We pulled these up, put them on the pressure tester, um, pressured them up, 20 PSI, absolutely no bubbles. That cup in there seals coolant around the injector tip so that it will cool the nozzle and keep the injector from overheating. This has a port in here, if I can get it to light up, that supplies fuel and then a lower support, a port that supplies return fuel or excess fuel back to the back to the tank and then that's coolant. So if that cup leaks, you're going to either get coolant into the fuel, fuel into the coolant, or you're going to get uh, coolant into the chamber. And if you're getting coolant in the chamber, you're going to be getting uh, compression gases into the coolant. There's, if, if, if it's got a bad enough leak that it'll get the coolant into the chamber, it will be getting uh, chamber pressure back into the coolant, no questions asked. But the issue actually comes in the injector. The injector, the way that the injectors work on these, you have a boss on the side of the block that has a cam follower. That cam follower has adjustable gaskets behind it or different thickness gaskets behind it that sets your base timing. That base timing then comes up to the head and then injection timing is timed by the setting of these injectors. Now you got two different style of injectors. You have what they call top stop injectors and you have standard non-top stop injectors or just standard injection. It's super easy to tell the difference of, between the two of them because a top stop injector will have over here, there will be a oil line from the rocker box that comes over and down on the, usually on the left rear corner of the block, there'll be about a two inch square uh, block that uses a balance between oil pressure and fuel pressure <clears throat> to supply oil to the injectors and will uh, advance the timing based on engine load. Um, there, you'll know right away if you get into a truck that ha or a tractor that has uh, STC injectors in it too because uh, when you fire it up, and especially cold, it will initially uh, run at a retarded timing and then the timing will advance up and it will change tone after just a few seconds once oil pressure builds. The issue comes in then these injectors. These injectors <clears throat> are cheap. Um, the, the cost to have one checked is around here is about 80 bucks. A brand new injector is 150. So it doesn't make any sense to, to test them. It's just cheaper to replace them once the times come up. Those injectors have been remanned so many times that the top position, which is, there, there's two different methods for adjusting the, the injectors. One of them is called the inner base circle method. One is the outer base circle method. The inner base circle method typically has you uh, adjusting the valves on one cylinder and the injector on another cylinder. The outer base circle typically has you adjust, adjusting the valves and the injectors on the same cylinder at the same time in order of firing order. When you do the inner base circle method and you are adjusting the injector at the top of the stroke, they, the injectors ha typically have been remanded enough times that that top, that top position is not the position that is um, critical anymore. It's the bottom stroke. It's the, it's the fuel stroke at the bottom that is way more critical now than the top stroke. So when you set the injectors, you set the injectors on the outer base circle method, which Cummins has pretty much unanimously switched over to saying that that's the preferred method. And you, you bottom the injector out, and usually on most of these, like this particular engine, is uh, 72 inch pounds with the injector bottomed out. Um, You'll see also typically on the inner base circle method, you'll see a uh, pretty standard valve lash of 11 and 23 for the exhaust and, or intake and exhaust. On the outer base circle, you'll typically see um, 14 and 27, and that's pretty well across the board, no matter whether it's a 
8359M11, N14. Uh, I've got a QSX15 out in the, in the driveway. That's the same, same adjustment across the board all the way. Cummins use the same, same measurements on almost everything. Of course, you need to check your manual, make sure that that's the case. Um, but, uh, I mean, even if I showed you the valve lash book, it's just straight down the board. It's almost all the same. Um, setting the injectors is the issue with this one. They set it to the inner base circle method. It uh, ran fine, just not quite right. The timing effectively on two or three cylinders was off. And so it didn't load the cylinders properly, and it overfueled. It had a gray-white smoke, which was unburnt fuel, um, out of the cylinders that weren't properly timed. Um, if you have two cylinders on one head that are both uh, that are both causing the issue, and the other four are running fine, uh, look real close to see whether or not a guy has changed the tappet gasket on the side of the cylinder or on the side of the block. I, I can't tell you how many times a guy just goes down to the hardware store and says, give me whatever gasket you've got. They slap one in there. Three or four cylinders are set at 10 degrees, and the, the, the other two are set at 5 degrees. Those two cylinders don't run right. It smokes like a freight train. So just some things to watch out for while you guys are working around these things. These set of heads are going to get a new set of valve guides. They're going to get a new set of valves. We're going to take two or three thousandths off of the face of them just to shine them up good. Um, send them back to the customer, and then uh, we're going to get him to uh, adjust the, the injectors the way that I want them ingested. And, and hopefully it uh, clears up and runs good for the customer.